The C word is a scary word. And when it reoccurs, it even scares you more. Truthfully, I was in shock. Uh, I never thought I'd get cancer. You just never think it's gonna happen to you. If someone tells you you have cancer, it's terrifying at first. Once you start that process, you know, you start to see some hope. I'm not afraid. I have perfect faith in the ability of these people. I mean, they all spent a lot of time in their life getting educated and think about the sacrifices they made so that they could help me. I was diagnosed with sarcoma cancer and to be honest with you, my first response was like, okay, what's the plan? How would you rate your fatigue on a scale of zero to 10? Uh, cancer is a condition where normal cells lose their ability to stop dividing. Under normal circumstances, the cells in our body can divide and grow in an orderly fashion. But when someone develops cancer, there's something that changes within them that allows these cells to grow unhindered. And so those cancer cells can invade and sometimes metastasize or spread to other parts of the body. There are many different tools that are used to fight cancer. These include surgery, these include chemotherapy, and they also include radiation therapy. There are many cancers which will require both radiation therapy and chemotherapy. Radiation therapy and chemotherapy can often be complementary because you're essentially hitting the cancer cell DNA from two different sides. Radiation therapy is the use of either high energy x-rays or particles to create a radiation beam that can treat cancer. It's different than chemotherapy or other systemic treatments which has a an effect all over the body. Radiation therapy works against the cancer cell by damaging the DNA of that cancer cell. It actually prevents those cells from dividing so that they die off over time. Radiotherapy can also impact normal tissues, but normal tissues have the ability in many cases to repair the radiation damage, whereas cancer cells often do not. Radiation therapy can be used in many different ways. It's often used as a definitive treatment, which means for cure, but sometimes it's used in something called palliative treatment to make symptoms go away. Approximately two out of three patients with cancer will eventually have radiation therapy as a course of their treatment. There are different types of radiation therapy. The most common radiation therapy that's used is an x-ray radiation. And this is very similar to a chest x-ray that patients are familiar with. The difference between what's called a diagnostic x-ray and a therapeutic x-ray, which is what we use in radiation therapy, is that it's a higher energy. So when we think about the different types of radiotherapy that can be delivered, all of them are using radiation to kill cancer cells. However, the different types may have different biological properties, for example, how they penetrate in tissue, their effects on normal tissue, et cetera, that causes one to be a bit different than the other type of radiation. So patients may hear a lot of acronyms that may be confusing to them, and the important thing is to ask if you don't understand something. IGRT is image-guided radiation, and it's where we are actually able to image or visualize the tumor or the target that we're aiming at while we're delivering the radiation. It's a way that helps us be assured that we're aiming correctly at the target that we want to treat. In today's era, virtually everything is delivered with IGRT. We're always trying to spare organs and tissues around the tumor, so we may use something called 3D conformal radiation. We are actually looking at the tumor in three dimensions, and we're delivering the dose, taking into consideration the volume that we want to treat. Another form of radiation that is very common throughout the world is something called IMRT, 
which stands for Intensity Modulated Radiation Therapy. And what it does is it allows us to shape the radiation in such a way that we can give maximal dose to what we call the target volume, which is the cancer, and spare normal critical tissues and organs around the tumor. Another acronym that people may hear is SBRT, which is Stereotactic Body Radiotherapy. And that is where we deliver radiation therapy in very high doses to a very confined or small target volume. SBRT is a way of sparing more tissue outside of the tumor that we want to treat. External beam radiation therapy also includes proton therapy. Proton therapy may not be widely available, but is appropriate for certain types of cancers. Protons are positively charged particles that can be used to create a radiation beam. Protons have different biologic properties compared to photons or high-energy x-rays. Another form of radiotherapy is brachytherapy, and that is where we are putting temporary or sometimes permanent radioactive sources into a body part to deliver the radiation. For example, some men who have prostate cancer will have radioactive seeds placed into their prostate. Those give off their radiation over a period of time and thus kill off the cancer cells. Brachytherapy can be delivered in one of two ways something called low-dose rate, LDR, or high-dose rate, HDR. LDR typically means the radiation is a permanent radiation source. High-dose rate radiation, HDR, is different in that it uses high-intensity radiation that goes in the patient temporarily and then is removed. A different form of radiation therapy is broadly termed as radiopharmaceuticals. These are drugs that are injected, typically intravenously, that deliver radiation to a specific area. Another form of treatment is called immunotherapy. Immunotherapy essentially triggers the body's own immune system to act against the cancer. Immunotherapy works by injecting a drug that will trigger when it finds the specific cancer it's looking for. Sometimes radiotherapy is used in conjunction with immunotherapy to prime the body or prime the cancer cells to the effects of the immunotherapy. There are many, many factors that go into determining what type of radiotherapy is appropriate for a patient. This is where the radiation oncologist, many times working in collaboration with other cancer specialists, is very important. The team-based approach to determining how a cancer should be treated should be very much at the forefront of the decision making. There are many members of the radiation therapy team that are vitally important to the appropriate and excellent delivery of radiation therapy for patients. We have the radiation oncologist who determines the treatment plan and meets with the patients periodically through their treatment course. The radiation oncologist is responsible for making sure the plan is delivered as initially planned. This means meeting with the patient on a weekly basis to make sure the side effects are not unexpected. And if there are side effects, what's the best way to manage those? Last treatment tomorrow. How's everything going this week? Real good, real good. It's... Nurses are critical and vital to supporting the patients in terms of managing their symptoms or addressing their problems. We're there to make sure that the patients have information that they need to get through their treatment. Patient education is probably the paramount role of the nurse during this process. We give them initial education about what they can expect from the start of treatment and what they can expect as they go along. All right, can you tell me your name and your birthday? Every patient will see a radiation therapist or the people who are running the treatment machines and they are vitally important for making sure that the patient is set up correctly. A radiation therapist is the day-to-day -day contact with the patients. A radiation therapist also is the person that delivers the treatment to the patient. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. 
There are very important people in radiation therapy treatment that are behind the scenes. These include the dosimetrist, who are the people who do computerized planning to come up with a plan to best deliver the radiotherapy to the patient. Basically, we deal with radiation dose that is introduced into the patient's body, and we create treatment plans to pinpoint that radiation to the target while trying to spare critical organs that surround the tumor or the target that's delineated by the radiation oncologist. What type of beam angles do you think are going to be the most effective? The radiation physicist is a critical part of the care team. The radiation physicist will make sure that the doses are appropriate. The radiation physicists also monitor the machines very frequently to make sure the dose is being delivered by the machine exactly as plan. Quite often we are consulted by the treating physicians on what might be the best modality to treat certain diseases. And we also work very closely with our dosimetry colleagues who design treatment plans using very sophisticated softwares. After they have their consultation, if radiotherapy is indicated, the patient will undergo a planning session, which we call a simulation. Often, but not always, this can include getting a CAT scan or a type of x-ray that gives us cross-sectional imaging of the body part that we want to treat. So we will be fabricating a custom head, neck, and shoulder pillow, so it'll be a little more comfortable than what you're on right now, okay? okay. The patient will be put on the treatment bed and a variety of different immobilization devices will be used to ensure that the patient is not only comfortable, but comfortable in a position that's reproducible on a daily basis. So next step is we're gonna fabricate your mask. It's gonna feel warm. Immobilization devices that might be created throughout the CT process could be a mask, a mold of the body, whether it's the arms or the legs, a mask on the head or on the abdomen or the pelvis. Just placing some marks on that head cushion. After that, we'll perform our scan, sometimes with or without contrast, depending on the area of treatment and what the physician needs for planning purposes. As a part of the preparation process in the simulation room, a patient may have a few small markings. They're tattoos, but they're about the size of a freckle. We use patient markings to line up the patient every day of treatment exactly in the same position they underwent the simulation process. Can we can see and hear you the whole time, so if you need us, just wave your hand, okay? okay? During the duration of the CT scan, it's very important for the patient to be relaxed. This is important because how we have the patient set up in CT is going to be replicated on the treatment machine. Okay, we're gonna start with the imaging now. So once all of our images are collected, then we send over all of our images over to dosimetry, and that's when the treatment planning will start. We have other diagnostic imaging like MRI, PET CT, diagnostic CTs with contrast that help the medical dosimetrist to delineate the target as well as the organs at risk that may be close to the target. This helps us to pinpoint the radiation more accurately are the rest of the critical structures within tolerances? The planning is incredibly meticulous. We take the patient's individual anatomy and we draw their specific tumor, their specific organs, and we come up with a plan that is specific for them. The treatment plan involves many beam angles so that we can precisely align those beams to the target and spare the critical organs. I was here for my simulation and I got my mask and um, basically to kind of get a, a bearing of what I have to do when I come in for my radiation. When a patient gets checked in for treatment, they will be shown which area they need to go for the waiting room or the changing room. If a patient needs to change, they'll go to the dressing room and then the therapist will come and get them for treatment. Can I get your name and date of birth? 
They will identify the patient using at least two identifiers to assure that they have the right patient. They will set up the patient according to the setup instructions given at SIM. Here's that warm blanket. Thank you. Therapists want to make sure everything is perfect. In order to do that, therapists use marks on the patient's body, on their immobilization devices, or using surface guidance to make sure that the patient is lined up. Oftentimes, there are imaging pictures of the body part that's being treated that are taken at treatments either daily or at least weekly that the physician checks to make sure that we are delivering the radiotherapy in the exact right location and that the setup is what they intended. Once everything is set up just perfectly, the therapists actually leave the room and you will be in the treatment room alone during treatment. Even though the radiation therapists leave the room, they are never leaving the patient. There's an intercom where they can hear and there's also cameras so they can see the patient at all time. Once treatment begins, the machine will rotate around the patient. Sometimes it will move in a smooth motion, other times it will start and stop dependent on the prescribed treatment and the treatment plan. Some treatment plans will require the table to move slightly as well. The machine doesn't make a lot of noise, but it does make a small buzzing noise. You won't feel anything. When a patient is laying on that table and holding very still, they are fighting their cancer. All done, great job. Once you get treatment underway, you're gonna get used to the routine. It's the same thing every day. And it's a positive thing knowing that, hey, I'm gonna live. They're going to defeat this cancer. After radiotherapy is complete, the radiation can continue to have biological effects, meaning that the blows that are delivered to the cancer cells can continue to work on those cells, even once the patient is done. Congratulations on finishing radiation. Radiation therapy can have side effects. Many of the side effects depend upon where the radiation is being delivered. Two of the more common side effects that are general are fatigue and skin reactions in the area of the radiation. There can be other more serious side effects to radiotherapy which should be discussed with your doctor. The side effects often are able to be managed, but the important points are that you need to bring up what experiences you're having. I've had some roughness on my jaw inside and my tongue, but I'm taking some medicine to clear that up, and it's, it's, uh, uh, it's really working. The more information that a patient can offer us as to what they're experiencing during treatment, the more we can guide them as to how to manage those side effects. There can be long-term side effects of radiation therapy. We do look for the development of radiation-induced cancers. These are extremely rare. It's been estimated that they're less than one per hundred and even one per thousand, but these can happen. Radiation is actually well tolerated. Most patients have very little impact from the treatment itself other than their direct side effects from the radiation. Most patients can drive themselves to treatment and drive themselves home without any problem. They can go to work. They can continue their normal life during treatment. The experience of radiation, I had no side effects, so it was fine. I feel just a little tired. Radiation therapy is incredibly safe. There are multiple checks and balances throughout the entire radiation therapy process. There are many ways in which the medical physicist ensures that patient treatments are safe. There are annual quality assurance, monthly QA, and daily QA. And in addition to that, there's patient-specific QA and where we look at the patient's specific plan. Patients are often concerned about whether they will be radioactive or emit radiation to those around them. By and large, that is not the case. 
particularly when we're treating patients with external radiation coming from a machine. So patients really should not fear being radioactive or putting their loved ones or family or friends in danger. During treatment, we encourage patients to continue to eat a healthy diet, um, continue their fluid intake, continuing to exercise, and doing the things that the patient normally does during treatment is highly recommended. Yeah. <laughs> your body will be a very good guide for you as to what you should and shouldn't do. So if your body is saying, I'm done, I need a rest, allow yourself that time. The repairing of those cells that are damaged during radiation is an important part of the healing process. We also encourage them to pay attention to their mental state. The stress of cancer can be hard on a patient. So don't neglect your mental well-being. The other thing that I often tell patients is accept help. Often there are people in patients' lives that want to help you that want to provide support. And so having others in your corner is often really important. Listen to your body, you know you best. And if something doesn't feel right and something's wrong, you let us know. You're gonna have good days and bad days. Don't beat yourself up because you're having a bad day. Because if you don't let yourself feel, then it's harder for you to fight for your cancer. Now that he's finished, um, what can we do at home to make everything better for him. Often I recommend for a patient, because it can be very overwhelming, is to either bring someone with you to the consultation or record the consultation if your radiation oncologist does not object. As well, when a patient is seeing their radiation oncologist weekly during their treatment, that affords another opportunity to clarify questions that you may have. Learning more and getting information is always good. It makes me feel better. Once I have more information, I can calm down. I know what to expect and what not to expect. Radiation therapy can be used to improve a patient's quality of life. Radiation therapy can cure cancer and make its symptoms go away, or in certain situations, it will make cancer symptoms less painful, allowing patients to be more active and get back to their daily life. New advances are occurring every day through research and discovery, and it's a good time to be optimistic about what the future will hold. I feel empowered by coming every day. You are participating in your fight, and your journey is being defined by you. Yes, I'm fighting my cancer. It's not gonna beat me, I'm gonna beat it. I feel good, I feel happy. If you see me trying to tear up because it's happy tears, because I'm done and I made it through. <laughs>